What's up guys, it's me, Mr. Bradley, and in today's video we're going to be learning about the three different types of skeletons. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and get ready to do the starter questions on your screen right now. There are all sorts of incredible creatures on planet Earth in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Along with this wide variety of animals comes different types of skeletal systems as well. A skeletal system allows animals to move, which is necessary for finding food, finding a mate or escaping predators. It also supports the animal's body and helps to protect its organs. To investigate the different types of skeletons that animals have, I think it's time to take a trip. You can find all sorts of creatures when you come to rock pools like the one behind me. And all animals have skeletons. However, not all animals have the same type of skeleton. There are three main types of skeletons. Endoskeletons, exoskeletons, and hydrostatic skeletons. So basically animals can fall into two categories, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone, like Skelly here. Look at that lovely spine, it's a fine old spine, isn't it? Invertebrates do not have a spine. If you're an animal without a backbone, you can go one of two ways. Ah, the humble jellyfish. These magnificent creatures have a water-based hydrostatic skeleton. Remarkable. So I just spotted a sea anemone. A sea anemone is an invertebrate, meaning it does not have a backbone. And most invertebrates have a hydrostatic skeleton. Animals with a hydrostatic skeleton include slugs and worms, but mostly include marine life, aka animals that live in the ocean, such as sea anemones. octopus, starfish and jellyfish. A hydrostatic skeleton is probably the weirdest of all the skeletons because it doesn't actually contain any bones. Instead, animals with a hydrostatic skeleton have a water-based skeleton. These kind of skeletons are pretty awesome because they're super, super flexible. The downside to these types of skeletons, the skeleton can't really support the body. If you take these animals outside of the water, they're kind of useless and can't stand upright or lift things. But what about the invertebrates that are hard on the outside? I think it's time to talk about the exoskeleton. So this is a sea urchin. Sea urchins are another animal, but as you can see, they're very different from us. The sea urchin has big spines all around it, and this is actually its skeleton. It has the skeleton on the outside. That's what we call an exoskeleton. Animals such as crabs, lobsters, insects and arachnids such as scorpions and spiders all have exoskeletons. I should know, I had one crawl over my face. Okay. Any animal with a shell, like the sand dollar, or a chitin exterior, like an insect, has in fact an exoskeleton. Exoskeletons are good because they're like protective armor and they also really strengthen the animal. The problem with exoskeletons is they don't grow along with the animal, meaning eventually the exoskeleton will become too tight for the animal and it will have to shed its exoskeleton, leaving it vulnerable to predators. The other problem with exoskeletons is that they restrict movement slightly, making it difficult for the creature to move around. Imagine Imagine if you were wearing a suit of armor, do you think it would be easier or harder to move around? These crabs I bought in the supermarket, but check out this amazing spider crab I came across with a cool exoskeleton while diving. Woo! Unfortunately it's a little bit on the small side, but still pretty cool. Oh, he's trying to pinch me. Take a look at him. <clears throat> Beautiful. I'm just gonna chuck them back in the water.
The final skeleton we're going to talk about is the endoskeleton. Vertebrates, unlike invertebrates, are animals that have a backbone. These animals include amphibians, reptiles, fish, mammals like us, and birds. Endoskeletons are made up of bones. The good thing about an endoskeleton is that it also grows along with the animal. The other good thing about having an endoskeleton is that you can move more freely. Unfortunately, with an endoskeleton, you're not as protected as an animal with an exoskeleton, and you're certainly not as flexible as an animal with a hydrostatic skeleton. Now here's a science experiment you can do. In this experiment we will examine our hands endoskeleton but we will also investigate what our hands would be like if we had an exoskeleton or a hydrostatic skeleton. Begin by examining the bones in your hand. Try gently bending your finger back to investigate how flexible your hand is with an endoskeleton. Now for the exoskeleton. Put Vaseline on your hand and then place it into a surgical glove. Next, wrap the glove in lots and lots of tape. Or if you're trying this at school of lots of students, maybe just wrap up one of your fingers. You will notice that your hand is now a lot more padded and protected, but you won't be able to move it as freely as before. Lastly, the hydrostatic hand. Fill a surgical glove with water and tie the end. You should notice how much more flexible the hand is than the exo or endoskeleton. The problem is that the hand can't stand up by itself because the skeleton gives it much less support. Recap time. Animals have skeletons to help them move, support their bodies and protect their organs. There are three different types of skeletal systems. Endoskeletons, which are skeletons that have their bones on the inside of the body. Exoskeletons, which are on the outside of an animal's body. And hydrostatic skeletons, which are mostly made of water. And so we've come to the end of our video about the three different types of skeletons. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.